Hello and welcome back. I am Arumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play some more of our campaign as the Great Golden Horde because we're cool and awesome and stuff. We're going to go ahead and we're going to take advantage of our nine heavies, 39 transports, and uh, we're just going to go ahead and declare war on this guy here named Turnate or whatever. I'm going to continue to keep a diplomat. Oh, just got slandered, apparently. Yep, imperialism. Go, done. Attach, go. Invade. Hmm. I feel like. This should just automatically work, but it doesn't, for some reason. Oh, great! <laughs> Our Sultan is really great <laughs> with his uh, greedy and indulgent modifiers. And he die, soon. Alright, while well, we were able to land there, I don't think we can... Yes, we can, apparently. That's curious. I feel like if you land on the zone of control, you probably shouldn't be able to do that, right? But, apparently you can. Making pretty good income. Trade income is at 95. Uh, we're probably making a fair bit for more reps from the Ottomans. 23 ducats a month. That's not bad. We're still ahead of time on military tech, and will be for a long time. I'm gonna go ahead and just raise war taxes so that we have tons of money right now. I don't know, whatever. Seems reasonable. 25 day siege, yep, that was good. Okay, that's all I need from you, so if you could just go ahead and give me what I want, <laughs> I'll peace out right now. That's probably not going to happen. We we'll probably have to go to your capital, which is that thing there, level 3 fort. Let's just, you know, swim over there and siege down his capital. He'll want to give up, and then we'll take all of his stuff. And then we have exiled armies. Yes, I forgot about all of this, didn't I? Well, we did lose a lot of men in that war against the Ottomans, and that was all my fault, because I didn't take the time... Don't, please don't path right through where the Persian army is. Why, why? That's my fault, because I didn't, I didn't really look hard to figure out where the leader had died. Okay. So, yep, it's just those three left. In fact, having that colony is good enough. We don't even have to actually have the colony complete. Should I keybind this? Maybe I should keybind this. How are you so wealthy, like, Turnate, as, as this little guy who's been colonizing like crazy? This crazy Spice Islands goods produced modifier. I mean, he's got... He's got so many goods produced. And yet... He's... Got a level 1 fort. He's on, he's on tech 22, like... Why didn't you build a new fort? Well... Hopefully I have enough heavies. Honestly, I, I really don't even care if we lose this fight. I could have had an admiral. At one point we had one that wasn't horrible. Do, do I have like superior heavies or something? Is that why we're winning? He's got frigates. Oh, I already sank all of his heavies. Great. I must have had better ones then. I don't know. We're actually killing... We're going to kill his entire navy, aren't we? No, I just completely misread the de-reinforce. Now he has heavies again. And most of my heavies are dead. Well, whatever, I don't really care. I don't want them. The only reason I built them was so we could do this war. That's it. And how come you don't get war score when troops die in, because you killed the navy? You should totally get war score for that. 2.5? That's nothing compared to the, the troop, troop death that he experienced from the other thing. Alright, just, let's just end this. I want... These three. You're not going to give me all three? Come on. Don't be such a dingus. 
Do I still actually have enough? Oh my nice! I actually still have enough transports to actually uh, pick these guys up too. Nice. Extreme strength or make the Ulima loyal and hire more influence. I, I don't care. I don't want to do either. Hey, I think I can hire a new general from the the uh, the Emirs now. No, no, not quite. Well, if I did this, I could. Let's do that. And then let's do... Great generalship. And... Over the leader limit, we've got a rebellious subject. The worst general is... Not you, I like the siege pips on him. A 2341, a 2303. Three. I like the siege pips on him as well. A 2311 is actually probably worse in my mind than this. So it's gonna be you, Sayed. You're dead. You're dead to me, sir. Alright, what do we got? Uh, enthusiasm, medium. Got another siege to do here. Version revolt. Okay, we got our recovery tick. Let's see if we can get one more. There we go. That ought to do it. Nice. Okay, do you have any money? Nice. Do you have any war apps? I want 500 ducats now, or do I want money over the next 10 years? I want 500 ducats now, I think. Okay, I'll just core the scrap myself. Why not? Next up is whenever the uh, truce timer comes up with the other guy, and then I, I'm leaning towards breaking the truce with Ming, or finding some other way to declare war on him, because I don't want to wait. He's got no allies. He probably still has ludicrous amounts of debt. Uh, let's find sort by score. He probably has some score. Ming is at... yeah, he's got 23 loans. And his debt is 8,537. Which is less than me. Alright, well, we are at peace at the moment, so... Check truce timers. Looks like it may have already expired with Wu. Nice, it did. Army's fully intact. Wu had no allies. He's a loser. It's a level one capital fort. We already got a siege guy. His composition, in his infinite wisdom, is two infantry, three cavalry, and thirteen cannons. That's smart. Let's just let's just slowly watch how this this battle unfolds to see if this is a good composition or not. So yes, he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cannons in the front row. They do they do full damage in the front row. They only do half damage in the back row. So I can see why he wants them up there. I what is this? I don't even. Okay, we'll leave a quarter of that army there. A quarter of each army on those. Those all combined back into that guy. This guy can leave. Go join that. Truce with Korea is up, but I don't want to do anything with Korea. Something, something corruption, I think. Um, obviously, we want full annexation. I mean, I have the points, and I'm... Pretty good at coring stuff quickly, because I am the Golden Horde, I've got the reduced coring cost here, I've got administrative ideas, if I'm not mistaken. So I could core it probably faster than my vassals can, and we already have the points anyway, so let's just take it for ourselves, why not? It does affect my trade income, but I just really don't care. Okay, back to the map mode. We need that. That's it. So if we check the achievement, I think we probably only have... Okay, so China, Xinan, and North China. So we don't have Xinan because of that one province owned by Ming. We don't have North China because Ming owns...
Wait, what? North, North China? What now? All provinces in the North China region are owned by me or my subjects. Or China. That's my border. That's my vassal's border. Does North China include islands or something? I doubt it. That's owned by a vassal, that's owned by me. Golden Horde, Golden Horde, Golden Horde, Golden Horde, Golden Horde. I must be going crazy, or I must be missing something. I mean, uh, naturally, if there was anything over here, it would be part of a, one of these other regions. Manchuria, Korea... It's not because they're not cored, because we instantly satisfied the ones in the other area. I don't understand. I feel like North China should be satisfied right now. Let's give it a month. Maybe the maybe it just hasn't updated? No? I don't know. I might have to wiki or Google this or something, because I don't get it. Is this... is this... did I miss something up here? You can't possibly be counting Manchuria as part of North China, right? Okay, regions Manchuria. It's, it's properly showing Manchuria. The North Chinese Charter, but that's different. I don't know. Maybe we just conquer all of them. Technically, I don't even need the colonists anymore. I could just cancel that idea group and do something else. But there's really no point. I mean, even if I could, I mean, probably the only idea I would take would be... I don't know, something. Okay, apparently Persia just decided to insult me. Always a wise move. Insult your overlord. Got Meow has a little bit of uh, liberty desire at the moment. We got two diplomats free. Don't really care. I mean, we, we, we've already had bad stuff happen to us. So I doubt that trying to counter espionage the Ottomans is going to prevent anything. All right, how long is this truce? Oh, 43. That's like six, seven, and, seven to eight years. I don't want to wait that long. We'd have to have full diplomatic ideas to get rid of this. Alright, um... I don't care. <laughs> it's time to go to war, alright? Our nation cannot be stopped. We are the Horde. We are aggressive. Uh, cohort 4 was not you? Okay. This is my land. Your war exhaustion is high. We're also at negative three stability. Eh, it happens. I guess we find out what happens after I, uh... That was so fast. After I take everything that I can that looks to me like it's supposed to be part of it, if it still doesn't satisfy the criteria, then I'll just go look it up on the wiki or something. 
Maybe there's another province. I'm leaning toward... I'm, I'm thinking it might be an island or something. Okay, 67 war score. Grand Swans military access, haha, very funny. I don't think we need that. Do we? We don't, according to this. But it has that gold mine, right? Okay, so this can go to Meow. I'll take that one. You, I think, have no overextension anymore. So you can have all of this. That was E. And annoyingly giving him land like this is going to just raise his autonomy, raise his liberty desire, even though I'm giving him territory. It's so dumb. It's really stupid that you, you lower their liberty desire when you take it for yourself and give it to them. Like, okay, you know what? Fine, screw it. I'm Here, give it, give it back, and I'm going to transfer it all to you as soon as the war is over. How is this any different? And yet, this is going to lower his liberty desire while giving it to him directly raises it because he has more development. It's just nonsensical. I'm sorry, Ming. I, I almost feel bad for you. Apparently, he's putting up one, one hell of a fight in these mountains. Fine. Good, good job, sir. You've done well. You're still going to cease to exist, but... Good job. I'll take it all myself and transfer it to him when we're done. And for the argument's sake, just depending on the actual war score cost. The total war score cost of all of Ming is 109. But I believe imperialism reduces costs by 70 by, by 25%. So we can full annex using this CB then. Transfer that to Meow. We demand full annexation, plus all your money. Goodbye, Ming. Ming's now gone. And then, again, looking at Liberty Desire, uh, Key's at 59, and if I just, <laughs> just transfer this to him, first off, let's see how the achievement looks. 258 out of 259. There's one province in the Zinnan region now. Apparently North China did update. It's kind of weird. Zinnan? What? What do I miss in Zinnan? I miss this one. How did that happen? Well, uh... Anyway, we're gonna take the time to do this. We're gonna go F1, F3. We're gonna go to Key. We're gonna give you stuff. Also, I'll pay on your debt, because I like you. Have, uh... Have this one. Have that one. F something. Again, it would be so much easier if you could click on the map. Running? Lowers their liberty desire by 4%. I mean, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll play within the constraints of the game, you know? But... <laughs> it just seems dumb. Alright, and I think that's enough for you. How's Liang look? They have none. Okay, Liang, you get some then. How's over there? Uh, Meow is at 67, because I granted him land. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> so dumb. Jinjua. Did I just not give you the right province? I feel like... I feel like I gave you something and it didn't actually change the map there, that time? Here, just take them all. I don't want to core them. That puts my overextension at... I've got some land up here. 
Oh, I gave this one away. Apparently. Okay. We should still have the same exact setting that it was at a second ago, and there's one more province to go. Let's march. We have now no no overextension. At least we shouldn't. We need to give it a day so that I can update. Now it's going to cost one one stability to get back up. Let's just up up a little bit, and then we'll go kill you. Of course, he's not going to have any allies, because why would he have allies? I don't understand how I missed this one, though. Well, that's kind of annoying. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter! All that matters is that we kill this country. As soon as we get a dip map. I want the best siege dude ever. Mr. Dani Al Bok Timur. Tim Timur. Show up. Show him who's boss. Negative 21% chance. What up? What the? How is that possible? Oh, 5 Fort? How does this guy afford a level 5 Fort? There's just no way. He can't afford to pay for that. There we go, Persia. Being helpful. Appreciate that. Make sure you have a good commander. You've got the 2 3 4. It's pretty good. It's good enough. Considering we've had low, low army tradition for a very, very long time, I, s I still feel like a 2-3 with any kind of maneuver value for, for movement speed and army recovery rate and and lower supply usage, they're, it, it's good. You know, 2-3-4 is an acceptable commander for me, in most cases. Not to mention every general has some siege pips because of our policy, so... It's good enough. Great con. Got it. Done. There it is. One last quick cursory check to see if there's anything else. We're not Coptic. We're not going to go to a million because that's a world conquest achievement. We're not going to do that because we're not Catholic or Protestant or Reformed. That's situational. I don't really want to mess with it. Uh, that's a world conquest achievement. That's a world conquest achievement. World conquest achievement. That one can't do because I never have three rival slots. That's world conquest. World conquest. Uh, I have the highest income in the world with that one. Yeah, I can't really do that because I'm not a horde anymore. I can't raise. Plus, you can't raise your own cores. I'd have to abandon my cores or do weird stuff. This one is just I need to pay attention for it. This one, don't really do anything with the revolution. This one's just a physical impossibility. This one, probably should have taken care of that when I did the Five Colonies of Castile campaign. This one, we'd have to switch government types. Can we switch government types and then pass reforms? We're currently an administrative monarchy. I could go to a constitutional monarchy. But passing 11 reforms is, I think you get, what, one reform every 10 years? So that that's a, a long time, basically. I think the easiest way to do that would be to... Let me just check real quick. E4, Institutional, Monarchy. Constitutional monarchy. As access the parliament, 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 debates. The debate process is as follows. If a country has no ongoing debate, it may start a new debate. The country starts the debate by choosing one issue out of a list of five randomly selected issues. The debates last for five years, during which time the country may bribe seats. Each seat of parliament is assigned a random bribe. Each fulfilled bribe increases the chance. If the debate succeeds, the issue goes into effect for ten years. If the debate fails, you may instantly begin a new debate. Okay, so it sounds to me then like every five years you can do it a debate. Still, 11 to, that's 55 years. I could do it in this campaign, but why do it in this campaign when we can just do it in another one where we get other achievements? So, yeah. I think we're good. I think we're done. Series finale. Finally, we're there. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven achievements in this run. Pretty decent. Not, not, not too uh, disappointed by that. What else do we still lack? I am currently at... 103 out of 205. 50%. There's still a lot of achievements that I have yet to do, apparently. 
quite a few. Unfortunately, I did a lot of these runs before I think either the Steam like achievement system was in, implemented or something with, with the U4. Like, I know I did Norwegian Wood. We played as Norway at one point. I, well, I played as Norway. I don't know if I did Norwegian Wood, but... I have three unions at the same time as Austria. Like, these require me to play as Austria. Like, I don't know. We'll see. There's a lot of achievements yet to do. For now, I'm going to take a break here. Um, I do think that for the short term, I'm not going to be doing too much EU4 until the next patch, unless it's multiplayer. So, this will be the end of this series, and also this uh, this this actual title's time slot for now, until the next expansion. So, as always, thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the campaign. Hope you enjoyed seeing the Golden Horde go big. Could have been faster if we'd done better with the institutions in the beginning, and if Persia hadn't been this massive dead weight just holding me down pretty much the whole campaign. I, th I think I sacrificed, I mean, even just looking right now, not counting the decay, we have uh, Liberty Desire in Persia is reduced by Placated Ruler 190.8. So that's, you get 10 for everyone. So that's at least, at least 20 times I click the button at a sacrifice of 20 prestige apiece. So that's 400 prestige. And then if you factor in the decay over the last like 200 years, Let's just see, 200 years times 12 months in a year times 0.1 is what they decay by each month. That's 240 that I've lost. 240 Liberty Desire that I've lost. And you get 10 per click, so that's 24 clicks, plus the 20 we just calculated. So that's probably 44 times that I clicked it, times 20 prestige each. I probably sacrificed 880 prestige on Persia in this run. So, yeah, anyway. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again in the next one.